In so many ways, I love the way the armed forces does business because there's just nothing done randomly or by chance. Everything is so well thought out. You know, it's very methodical. It's very strategic, like right from the very beginning. When individuals enlist, that ranking officer immediately, you know, goes into action to help change the psychology, help change the thinking of this individual, to take them from the I mentality, the me mentality, to the we, us, team mentality. Personally, I've never had the opportunity to serve, but like many of you, I've seen films, I've watched documentaries, and you know, we've all seen with these newly enlisted soldiers that go off to boot camp, and it's always that, you know, Sergeant Slaughter type drill sergeant that is on their behind and waking them up early and making sure that they're running, you know, dozens of miles a day and doing tons of push-ups and calisthenics and really pushing them to their physical and mental limits. And they're doing all of this to break them down and build them back up because, you know, at the end of the day, they want them to be the best human beings, the best soldier, the best individuals, and the best future leaders that they can possibly be. And a funny thing happens. By the time that these newly enlisted soldiers are about to graduate boot camp, they don't just look at the others that went through this process with them as, you know, peers. They really look at them as my brothers and sisters. And that same drill sergeant that was going so hard at them, they have a certain reverence and a certain trust for this individual that they are ready to serve up under them and take, you know, their direction and really trust their lives, entrust their lives to them because this person has proven themselves as a great leader. And when I think about it, you know, I wonder why so many companies in the private sector don't adopt, you know, not all, but some of the techniques that the armed forces uses to build great leaders. We've all worked under, you know, just horrible bosses. I hate to say it that way, but just people who should never, never be managing people, you know, let alone managing themselves. You know, it's, it's just crazy because in, in so many companies, it's like, what are the qualification? Like, what has made this individual qualified to lead a team? Because ultimately, they are unfit, untrained, and unqualified. Not to just lead a team, but to lead a business, to manage a company. It's like, come on, who put you in charge? And these individuals confuse, like, a position of authority with leadership. I so often say that people don't follow titles. They just don't follow titles. They follow leaders. And because so many people who are put in positions of authority have no formal training on how to be a leader, they lead out of fear. They lead out of the fact that I can give you a bad write-up or I can get you fired. That is not the way you inspire people. That's not the way you bring out the best in your team members. That is not the way you get results and have people wanting to give their best as opposed to feeling like I have to, you know, meet a certain level or else I'll lose my job. That's not great leadership. You know, we've all worked under these bosses that, you know, you are so scared to send an email. You're reading it five or six times. You are like literally proofreading the smallest email before you hit send because you're so worried about your boss sending you back a snarky remark or, you know, they find the one T that's not crossed or the one I that's not dotted to make you feel that you're not on your job. You know, that boss that comes in and, you know, they, they, they're pissed off because, you know, they want you at your seat working at 9 a.m., not just strolling in the door, but they want you at that seat working at 9 a.m. Like, there is no give, there is no take, there's no sense of camaraderie, there's no sense of team. And I speak to so many of you guys and you and, and so many of you guys are frustrated. You, you, you're ready to put your resume out there. You're ready to walk off the job and just quit. But I'm saying stay, accept the challenge of working under that horrible boss 
because at the end of the day, like really, really think about it, just like in the armed forces, the armed forces is they they're always hiring. You know, right now, if you wanted to join, you can definitely go and, and, and join the armed forces. Why? Because in times of peace, you prepare for war. It's like right now, they are accepting applications, accepting new soldiers, because at any, at any given time, they can get a phone call and we're going to war. No different in the private sector. You know, when you're dealing with an uncomfortable, you know, job situation and you have this boss that is making your life miserable, what does it make you do? It makes you really step your game up. It makes you really read through your emails and read through your work, do research, make sure that you are coming to your meetings and you have done your due diligence and you're not speaking just to speak, but when you speak, you are speaking facts. You are putting numbers up on the board. Your sales numbers are going up. You are making sure that just to keep this person off my butt, I am doing every little thing that I can possibly do at the highest level because I just don't want to hear this person's voice. But guess what? In the interim, your skill set is being enhanced. You're growing as a future leader. So one day when you get bumped up, you leave the company, you start your own business, you've seen it done wrong. Now you just implement your systems, your strategies, and you go and you work with your team, but now you are Green Beret. You know how to get a job done. You know how to do the due diligence and really micromanage and make sure that your work is being done at an efficient level. Accept the challenge. Don't quit. Don't walk off that job. Don't let that horrible boss win. That boss, that that you know, that unqualified person, as as unqualified as they might be, they might be the best thing that's ever happened to you because they might be the single greatest variable that brings out the best in you. Maybe you won't get a, a chance to shine in your current position. But life goes on. You will grow. You will one day be a leader. And because of them, you'll be ready. You'll be up for the challenge. You'll be ready to do something that that person indirectly trained you for. You know, it's this saying, right? That, that pressure busts pipes, but it also makes diamonds. You got to make sure that pressure, that pressure, it don't bust pipes, not, not, not your way. That same pressure that busts a pipe can also make you a diamond. Step up to the challenge. Reverse your thinking. Change the way that you see your current situation working under an unqualified individual. It's all about perspective change your perspective, and ultimately, it could change your life. Peace and love, guys. Make every move a power move, and I'll catch you on the next video. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.